gentlemen, brothers and sisters in the fight, I will ask for indulgence because I probably will be making some remarks in Spanish. Um, you know, as, as I stand here before you, I'm reminded that there are way more than certainly 33 organizations in the state that have, this, have been fighting this issue for quite some time. And it occurred to me this morning that even before I was a glimmer in my mother's eye or in my father's eye, someone was fighting for my right to vote. So I come today with full knowledge and understanding of that. I also think that um, many of our organizations have been fighting a hard fight, a long fight in the state of Florida, in the great state of Florida. We deserve better. Our organizations are fighting every single day to make sure that individuals that are covered and protected under the Voting Rights Act of 1965, that individuals died for, that individuals sweated for, that individuals made tremendous sacrifices for, are kept intact today. We know that HB 1355 is nothing more than legislated voter suppression. Oh, yeah. We know this for a fact. So I say to you as a member, a, a person who, I, who is protected under the Voter Rights Act of 1965, as both a racial minority and also a language minority, that I am very proud of the work that our organizations are doing. But it is a heavy, heavy fight. We have many, many people on the front lines. And it's not over. HB 1355 passed last year, and we still have three additional bills in the legislature, passing through the legislature that address voter ID. Thank goodness that we have individuals that are fighting to make sure that none of those additional voter ID bills are passed in the state of Florida. For those of us who think beyond the state of Florida and think about our family members, and think about our brothers and sisters, and our congregations, and many, many, many other people all over the country, we know that there have been 266 pieces of legislation around the country addressing voter ID. It is legislated voter suppression. As a matter of fact, the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under Law called it the map of shame, actually created the map of shame. So I say to you today, both in English and in Espanol, que nosotros tenemos que defender nuestro derecho a votar. We have to be able to defend our right to vote in the state of Florida. El trabajo es difícil, es arduo, pero le digo a ustedes en español, and forgive me my brothers and sisters because I need to say this in Spanish. Para nuestra comunidad es importante saber que nos cogieron nuestros trabajos, nos cogieron nuestros trabajos, nos cogieron nuestras cajas, casas. Nosotros estamos sufriendo a través de no tener vivienda, no tener trabajo, que no nos quiten el voto también. Tenemos que pararnos, tenemos que defender nuestro derecho a votar aquí en el estado de Florida porque nosotros sabemos que este es el Capitolio, el Capitolio de robarnos nuestro voto. Entonces nosotros tenemos que hacer qué? What do we have to do? Tenemos que educar a nuestra comunidad. We have to educate our community. Mm -hmm. Tenemos que decir a la gente que HB 1355 cambia las leyes, cambia su acceso al derecho a votar, su acceso a escribir, su acceso a poner su nombre y su voz con un voto en el estado de Florida. We know that we have to fight hard to educate our voters, to make sure that they know that in April of 2011, this bill was passed and was signed by our governor of the state of Florida, Governor Rick Scott. And it's not because it's an issue of voter ID, it's not because it's an issue of voter disenfranchisement, it's because it is legislated voter suppression. And we understand motivations. We understand good motivations, and we understand not so great motivations. Nosotros entendemos motivación buena, y nosotros también entendemos motivaciones malas. So I say to you today, le digo en español, and I say to you in English and in Spanish, let us stand up and make sure that we protect the right to vote. Vamos asegurando que podemos proteger nuestro voto a votar. I also want to say thank you to the ACLU and the many, many, many organizations that work tirelessly, and I also want to take a moment to thank the United States Senate Judiciary Subcommittee on the Constitution, Civil Rights and Human, and Human Rights. When I first saw the name, I said, thank goodness that we have our federal legislators watching this done, watching this fall to protect our rights.